How did Commander Keen come to be? So the design process, we would start from, we had some idea of what we wanted to do. We wanted to do a Mario-like game. It was going to be a side-scroller. Uh, it was going to use the technology. We we had some sense of what it would have to look like because of the limitations of this adaptive tile refresh technology. It had to have fields of relatively constant tiles. You couldn't just paint up a background and then move that around. Uh, the early design, or all the design for Commander Keen really came from Tom Hall, where he was, uh, you know, he was kind of the main creative mind for the the early id software stuff. Where we had an interesting division of things, where Tom was all creative and design, I was all programming. John Romero was an interesting bridge, where he was both a very good programmer and also a very good designer and artist, and kind of straddled between the areas. But Commander Keen was very much Tom Hall's baby, and. Uh, he came up with all the design and backstory for the different things of kind of a uh, mad scientist little kid with, uh, you know, building a, a rocket ship and a zap gun and uh, visiting alien worlds and doing all of this that the background that we lay the game inside of. And there's not a whole lot to any of these things. You know, design for us was always just what we needed to do to make the game that was going to be so much fun to play. And we made our, we laid out our first trilogy of games, you know, the shareware formula is going to be three pieces. We make Commander Keen one, two, and three. And we just really started uh, busting on all that work. And it went together really quickly. It was like three months or something that while we were still making games every month for, uh, for Gamer's Edge, we were sharing technology between that. I'd write a bunch of code for this and we'd just kind of use it for both. Uh, again, not a particularly good idea there that had consequences for us. But in three months, we got our first uh, our first game out, and all of a sudden, it was three times as successful as the most successful thing Apogee had had before, and we were making like $30,000 a month in, immediately from the Commander Keen stuff. And that was, again, a surprise to us. It was more than we thought that was going to uh, – that that was going to make. And we said, well, we're going to certainly roll into another set of titles from this. And in that three months, I had come up with a much better way of doing the scrolling technology that was not the adaptive tile refresh, which in some ways was even simpler. And these things, so many of the great ideas of technology are things that are back of the envelope uh, designs. I make this comment about modern machine learning, where all the things that are really important practically in the last decade are, each of them fits on the back of an envelope. There are these simple little things. They're not super dense, hard to understand uh, technologies. And so the the second scrolling trick was just a matter of like, okay, we know we've got this 64K window. And the question was always like, well, you could make a two by two, but you can't go off the edge. Uh, but I finally asked, well, what actually happens if you just go off the edge? If you take your start and you say, it's like, okay, I can move over, I'm scrolling. I can move over, I can move down, I'm scrolling. I get to what should be the bottom of the memory window. It's like, well, what if I just keep going? And I say, I'm going to start at, uh, you know, what happens if I start at FFFE at the very end of the, the 64K block? And it turns out it just wraps back around to the top of the block. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, this makes everything easy. You can just scroll the screen everywhere. And all you have to draw is just one new line of tiles, which everything you expose, it might be unaligned off various parts of the uh, of the screen memory, but it just works. That no longer had the problem of you had to have fields of the similar colors because you, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be having a, a completely unique world and you're just drawing the new strip as it comes on. But it might be, like you said, unaligned. So it can be all over the place. Yes, yeah, and it turns out it doesn't matter. I would have two page flipped screens. As long as they didn't overlap, they moved in series through this uh, two-dimensional window of graphics. And that was one of those like, well, this is so simple. This just uh, this just works. It's faster. Um, there, it seemed like there was no downside. Funny thing was, I it turned out after we shipped titles with this, there were what they called uh, super VGA cards, the cards that would allow higher resolutions and uh, and different features that the standard ones didn't. And on some of those cards, uh, this was a weird compatibility quirk again, because nobody thought this was not what it was designed to do. And some of those cards had more memory. They had more than just 256K in four planes. They had 512K or a megabyte. Mm -hmm. And on some of those cards, 
I scroll my window down, and then it goes into uninitialized memory that actually exists there rather than wrapping back around to the top. And then I was in the tough position of, do I have to track every single one of these? And it was a madhouse back then with, there were 20 different video card vendors with all slightly different implementations of their non-standard functionality. So either I needed to natively program all of the, the VGA cards there to map in that memory and keep scrolling down through all of that. Or I kind of punted and took the easy solution of when you finally did run to the edge of the screen, I accepted a hitch and just copied the whole screen up there. So on some of those uh, those cards, it was a compatibility mode. In the normal ones, when it all worked fine, everything was just beautifully smooth. But if you had one of those cards where it did not wrap the way I wanted it to, you'd be scrolling around, scrolling around, and then eventually you'd have a little hitch where 200 milliseconds or something that was not super smooth. It, for, yeah, as it, it froze a little yeah. bit. And this was the binary thing. Is it one of the standard screens or is it one of the weird ones, the Super VGA ones? Yeah. Okay. And so we would default to, and I think that was one of those that changed over the kind of course of deployment where early on we would have a normal mode and then you would have, you would enable the compatibility flag if your screen did this crazy flickery thing when you got to a certain point in the game. Uh, and then later, I think it probably got enabled by default as just more and more of the cards uh, kind of did not do exactly the right thing. And that's the two-edged sword of doing unconventional things with technology where you can find something that nobody thought about doing that kind of scrolling trick when they set up those cards. Uh, but the fact that nobody thought that was the primary reason when I was relying on that, then I wound up being broken on some of the later cards.